I will start with the official opposition, MPP French. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you, Minister. As the critic for infrastructure, transportation, and highways, I very much appreciate the chance to ask questions during estimates. I regret uh, that this is such a short opportunity, but I will try to be concise. I, I will ask the Minister also appreciate the importance of accountability and will endeavor to do that together. Uh, I recognize it's been a busy day so far. Minister Ontarian saw you on TV today um, with the Premier at an announcement about the feasibility of a 60-kilometer subterranean highway tunneling under the 401. Um, I'm sure we'll have lots of time to debate this and we'll get dragged into the Premier's newest rabbit hole when we return to Queen's Park. But as one of the ministers making the announcement, I would ask, uh, where in the estimates do we see these costs? This is potentially the largest public infrastructure project we've seen. So will the Ministry of Infrastructure or Infrastructure Ontario be involved with this uh, technical evaluation? And if so, how much taxpayer money uh, is going to go down that rabbit hole? Well, thank you very much to the member for the question, and the member will always have an opportunity at question period when the House returns to ask more questions. Happy to be here. I think the Premier was very clear this morning. I was very pleased to join him to talk about the issues that we're facing in the province in the greater Toronto area, and that's of traffic and congestion. It is one of the reasons why the Premier led the way in expanding the subway system by 50%. Um, in the city of Toronto and York Region, and it's also a great motivator to us for building transit-oriented communities, which are included in our estimates, as you can see, uh, so that people can live near transit and not be car dependent. But that being said, there is a traffic and congestion issue that we're trying to address. Um, it is not included in our estimates. This is a new initiative that was, a, uh, that was explained by the Premier today, and the Ministry of Infrastructure, Infrastructure Ontario, and the Ministry of Transportation will be working together on that feasibility study. Thank you very much. Um, I actually I want to pick up where we left off last year, Minister, uh, with our, our estimates, uh, with questions about Ontario Place. Um, in the Ministry's Estimates Briefing Book, on page 68, we see the government has allocated $88 million for infrastructure partnership projects, which includes spending on the Ontario Place rebuild. This is just the beginning of hundreds of millions of dollars in planned expenditures to enable uh, this vision for Ontario Place that includes a 95-year lease for a private luxury spa operator. Um, I'm asking questions to better understand the processes that are the basis of the minister's spending plans. Um, I'm, these are mostly yes or no questions, although uh, here we go. Um, Minister, one of your first acts as Infrastructure Minister was to announce the selection of Therma as a partner in the Ontario Place revitalization following the call for development process. Last year, uh, you described the Ontario Place call for development as a, quote, competitive process. Um, you've used this term competitive process repeatedly um, when talking about the integrity of the process. However, um, we've obtained the government's process participant form for the Ontario Place call for development process, which bidders were required to sign. This document explicitly states that the process was, quote, not a bidding process nor a formal competitive bidding process, end quote. So my question is, uh, Minister, were you aware that this was not a competitive process when you repeatedly uh, described Smith? it as such? <laughs> that uh, this is estimates and the questions on policy don't tie into estimates. If, if there's a question about uh, the money that was uh, being allotted to, to be spent, that would be very different, but uh, she's discussing policy, not uh, estimates. Thank you. I would encourage all members to stay on topic for this set of estimates. I will go back to MPP French. Thank you. And I'll finish the question because, as I said, this is about the minister's spending plan. Um, was the minister aware this was not a competitive process when she was just, uh, repeatedly describing it as such? Thank you very much. I'm happy to take this question. Uh, the province did, through Infrastructure Ontario, lead a call for development. Uh, there was great participation in the call for development. I believe that there were close to, if not 30 or so participants that made submissions that were then evaluated by an arm's length agency, Infrastructure Ontario, which then came to government with recommendations. Therme was a successful proponent in that process. And from articles and document, uh, from articles that I've seen in the past, um, uh, even with a previous government, Therme was 
uh, through procurement with the previous government, Third May was also a participant in that process as well. That Thank being you. said, we were successful in selecting uh, at the time three very good tenants that would invest. Chair, Chair I will ask to reclaim my time. Um, Minister, I reviewed last year's estimates and all of this is, we don't need to rehash this. I think uh, you and uh, Infrastructure Ontario were clear about that uh, last time. But what I'm talking about is the process participant form for the Ontario Place Call for Development process says clearly, quote, it is not a binding process nor a formal competitive bidding process. You have called it a competitive process. So I was asking if you were aware it was actually not a competitive process according to the documentation. So, so Chair. Okay. Uh, again, I'll renew it. This, there's not a question in there about uh, the finances of it. There's not a question uh, related to uh, estimates. And I would request Chair. that the member be reminded that Chair. This is about the estimates of the spending of the ministry, and there is not a question there about spending. I will, I will remind all members that the question should be about estimates. Chair, this is about the ministry spending and estimates. This is a massive amount of spending, uh, and I think that this is our one chance to ask real questions and for government members to interrupt and try and rag the puck, I think is a shame. So I will move on to the next question because I don't, I don't see an answer there. Um, the process participant form says that all ideas and content in a bid submission would become the property of the government to use as it pleases. The document also says that the government was free to select a participant that had not met eligibility requirements. The government could even select a participant that had not submitted any bid. The document says the government may waive any and all perceived potential or actual conflicts of interest, and the form required participants to sign a non-disclosure agreement that prohibited them from sharing any information about the process. These are very unusual terms for a procurement process and may have affected the willingness of prospective participants to submit bids. Was the minister aware that this process required prospective bidders to assume such risks? Again, back in 2019, we had a call for development, which was competitive and included 30 participants. Participants were evaluated by an arm's length government agency, Infrastructure Ontario, and through that process, recommendations were made to government, and at the time, three tenants, three future tenants were selected, Therme, Echo Recreo, and Live Nation. And I will hand it over to Mike Lindsay to speak about the call for development process. I, and Chair, specifically, I asked if the minister was aware that this, pro that this process required prospective bidders to assume such risks. I don't need to walk back through the process. It is on record. You've, you've done a, a, a good job doing that at the last estimates. Was the minister aware? Again, all government procurements under our ministry okay. pertaining to P3 or other large infrastructure projects are led by Infrastructure Ontario, which is a government, which, which is an arm's length government agency. I will turn it over to Michael Lindsay. I'm not. I'm asking. For, well, M Mr. Lindsay, if you're able to answer whether the minister indeed knew that this was not a competitive process or that this process required prospective bidders to assume such risks, if you would be happy to answer that, that's what I'm looking for today. Please. Mr. Chair, uh, for Hansard, Michael Lindsay, President and CEO of Infrastructure Ontario, MPP, thank you for the question. I would say that such legal language is actually far more common with government procurements than you might otherwise believe. It would be natural for us as an independent agency running a process on behalf of the government to have an expansive set of rights for the government in connection to anybody participating to our process. So I think that the exceptionalism of this that you're pointing at isn't as wide as you might think it is. I will just say that I believe absolutely the call for development process was transparent. It was structured by publicly disclosed objectives of the government, and all bidders were evaluated by subject matter experts consistent with those objectives and recommendations were made to government on that basis. Okay, thank you. Um, Minister, I'm, gonna, I'm circling back because the, pro the actual government's process participant form for the Ontario Place Call for Development process which bidders were required to sign, explicitly states, quote, 
not a binding process nor a formal competitive bidding process, end quote. And Minister, even this morning, you've again referred to it as a competitive process. The, if it says it is not a competitive bidding process that you are re requiring them to sign, and later an NDA, uh, I guess I'm, I'm wondering why you're continuing to call it a competitive process now. Is this something you were familiar with? Like, did you already know that it was not a competitive process in, in the government's own writing on the government's own form? Mr. Chair, Michael Lindsay, President and CEO of Infrastructure okay. Ontario. Uh, again, MPP, I, I would disagree okay. with the characterization of this as not having been a competitive process. Again, procurement documents issued by the Government of Ontario, all of its agencies often have expansive rights that are described for the provincial authority, which allow us maximum flexibility in respect okay. of what we can and can't do with bids. We okay. are then governed by custom, and our market expects it to run competitive processes, which is what we did here. Thank you. Um, if, if it indeed was intended to be a competitive process, I guess I wonder why the language on that government form uh, suggested, well, explicitly stated otherwise. Um, I'll, I'll move on. Uh, the NDP obtained via FOI a copy of an email that was sent on July 17, 2020, when the call for development process evaluation was underway. The email was sent to officials at Infrastructure Ontario and the Tourism Ministry by a thermal lobbyist John Paranak of Strategy Corps. Mr. Paranak was warning these officials that the Toronto Star was working on a story about the call for development and Therma's bid. Par Paranak writes, quote, unless otherwise directed, we will not be providing a response, end quote. One of the officials contacted was Infrastructure Ontario's Craig Lawrence, who was serving on the Ontario Place bid evaluation team at the time. Is the minister aware that a Therma lobbyist had contacted a member of the bid evaluation team while the bid evaluation process was still underway? Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to say that's out of order. This has nothing to do with what we are here to discuss today. <laughs> Again, just to repeat, in case I haven't been clear enough, in 2019, we had a call for development. We had participants. We had close to, if not 30 participants that participated in the process and made submissions. These submissions were then evaluated by Infrastructure Ontario, which is, which is an arm's length government agency which made recommendations to government. So, Chair, we have kept the I'll public. I'll reclaim my time. I, I will turn I'm going, to MPP fresh. I'm going to reclaim my time. Anything to do with this ministry's spending is before us right now. And Ontarians are very concerned that we don't have transparency or an understanding of where the money's going. And now when we, I have questions about the bid process to ensure that the accountability uh, and the, you know, government spending is indeed in line with Ontarians' priorities or that things are done above board, I'm asking a legitimate question. Will the minister answer, was the minister aware that a Therma lobbyist had contacted a member of the bid evaluation team while the bid evaluation process was still underway? Yes or no? Oh um, MPP Smith. I fail to hear anything in that question related to actual spending. We are discussing the estimates of the spending of the Ministry of infrastructure. Okay, okay. Questions that have nothing to do with spending are out of order. I would encourage all members to tie their questions directly back to spending and the estimates that yes. are before us today. Thank you. Um, flip back to page 88 then, uh, as we had talked about the Ontario Place uh, in the Ministry's Estimates Briefing Book, page 68, the government has allocated $88 million. Um, for infrastructure partnership projects, which includes spending on the Ontario Place rebuild. I'm asking about the Ontario Place rebuild. Um, so, also, I find it fascinating that the government members, not the minister, are jumping in to protect the minister. I think I have more faith in the minister's ability to answer for herself than some of her colleagues might. Minister, you don't have to answer, but I am asking you a question. Um, were you aware? that a Therma lobbyist had contacted a member of the bid evaluation team while the bid evaluation process was still underway. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, uh, you know, I the minister has highlighted many times in the House that the process was competitive and fair as should be. 
Uh, I think now is the opportunity for the member to ask about the government spending. Can you stop? Uh, you will get it, get that opportunity when the house. Is this a point of order? Oh my goodness! And, and it, is this is this a, a grown woman who can handle herself, boys? And, and, like and, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. And, you also get and, a rotation. <laughs> and thank you. I will remind the members that they are to a bring the, their questions to the estimates and secondarily that any point of order should be risen in the format of a point of order through me before uh, going further. Thank you. I will come back to MPP French. Okay. Minister, I don't know whether they'll let you try again, if you can answer this for yourself as a grown woman that I have faith that you are. I will answer the question. And I will say that I think this government does truly understand what government priorities are. I think you can see that reflected in the estimates that we are reviewing today with the fact that we are increasing, constantly increase, increasing not only the operational but capital budget for the Ministry of Infrastructure in order okay. to build this province. We Thank are providing you, municipalities with the support no. that they need in order to ensure we have the infrastructure at hand to serve communities. Thank, Thank you, you, Minister. I, it is a yes or no. I, can see that that's not forthcoming. Uh, I, if it isn't a no, then I would wonder if you are aware of this, I wonder if you were aware of it prior to the government's approval of the 95-year thermal lease on April 20th, 2022. And that's spending. Mm -hmm. While we're here at estimates discussing spending. Spending of a lot of money, potentially, eh? Secret. Okay, I'll move on. Um, that same Mr. Lawrence that I had referred to, um, who was one of the officials contacted uh, Infrastructure Ontario's Craig Lawrence, who was serving on the Ontario Place bid evaluation team at the time. Mr. Lawrence then forwarded the email to Patrick Sackville, who is currently the Premier's Chief of Staff, who wrote, quote, I understand you've been all over this, so perhaps you've already seen the latest below. I'm available to discuss at your earliest, or excuse me, at your convenience if helpful. I've been crystal clear and very aggressive in my messaging that the rules of the NDA apply and we will not tolerate external communications, end quote. Mr. Sackville responds, quote, well aware, end quote. If Mr. Paranak's email was only, quote, the latest, what other such external communications occurred during the call for development process? Again, the, current, the call for development process was run by an arm's length agency, and that is Infrastructure Ontario, which then provide a recommendation to government. But what I will be clear on is that okay. we have been tr fully transparent on the entire process. We spoke about what our vision is for Ontario Place to bring it back to life and make it a tourist attraction and destination okay. for families. And we also came back to government with a greater majority. And I so we'll, what you can see in the estimates is the fact that we are spending money to get the site prepared for our future tenants to bring Ontario Place back to life. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Uh, 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 how much time do I have left? left? Okay. A little less. The NDP obtained evidence via FOI that the government was planning a publicly funded garage near the Therma site at least as early as January 2021, half a year before the government announced Therma as one of the participants in the Ontario Place redevelopment. This is despite the call for development document, clearly warning prospective bidders that the government would not pay for such facilities. Were other bidders informed that actually the government was now willing to pay for new parking facilities at Ontario Place and given an opportunity to submit bids based on this new information? I'm looking for a yes or no. I'm, is I'm, it I have a point of order from um, oh MPP Smith. Could the member please uh, direct where in the estimates binder the uh, d spending for that is? Not really a point of Think, order. No, but it <laughs> absolutely isn't. And any policy requiring government resources to implement is part of the spending plan. You get the gold star today, Mr. Smith, for interruptions. Well done you. You've used up a lot of my time, but I have faith that the minister knows what she's talking about and can answer for herself. So, minister, is this a yet? I'm asking a yes or no. Please bring your comments through the chair. Pass it over to Michael Lindsay, CEO of Infrastructure Ontario. I've been clear in the House that a parking facility is absolutely necessary if we want this to be a tourist destination and attraction for families. We are connecting the Ontario line and bringing it to Ontario Place, which will make it 
far more accessible. There is a go there, but not everyone can take public transit when they're traveling with their families. And I've heard this in and the so House Minister. I'll reclaim my have, time. This has ten seconds, five seconds. Did the minister inform the premier or cabinet under the lease agreement uh, Thermo would I be provided you. with a? That's the end of the question period. And thank you. I recognize MPP French. Thank you, um, and I'm glad to take us back to Ontario Place. Um, Regarding the FOI that the NDP obtained um, about the government planning a publicly funded garage near the Therma site at least uh, as early as January 2021, the call for development document clearly warned prospective bidders that the government would not pay for such facilities. So I was wondering, and I think I've asked this before, but were bidders other than Therma informed that actually the government was willing to pay for new parking facilities at Ontario Place? And were they given an opportunity to submit bids based on this new information? And this is a yes or no. We can all read last year's estimates for the, the other details. Mr. Chair, the, the clerk tells me I no longer need to state my name. <laughs> I've, I've arrived in some Mr. Mr. Lindsay, I'm um, happy to hear from you. During the process of call for development, where we had 30 submissions from an international set of bidders, you're right, the call for development process asked those bidders to specify solutions for parking in Ontario Place. During the course of any competitive procurement, which is what happened here, we had conversation with those bidders in respect of what was and was not required in order to animate their business models. We made recommendations to the government on the basis of a call for development process that was intentionally designed to try to create some flexibility for the government of Ontario to think about how it would animate Ontario Place. We landed on a multi-tenant solution associated with the redevelopment of Ontario Place. And as part of that, based on what we heard through the call for development process, we came to appreciate that it would be, possible, it would be necessary for the government of Ontario to provide a parking solution to animate all of the uses of Ontario Place. Then specific, then, sorry. No, I, and further to that, um, were, were bidders other than Therma then apprised of that change in perspective or approach that the government was now willing to pay for new parking facilities? After the selection of the three proponents that we uh, had coming out of the call for development process as we entered into the phase of actual commercial negotiations with those counterparties, all of those selected counterparties were advised of the fact that we were considering publicly provided parking at Ontario Place, consistent with the needs not only of those tenants, but also, we hope, the hundreds of thousands of people who will benefit from the extensive public realm investments that are happening down at Ontario Place. Thank you. Um, did the Minister of Infrastructure uh, inform the Premier or Cabinet that under the lease agreement, Therma would be provided with a publicly funded parking garage that had been explicitly denied to other bidders prior to the government's approval of the 95-year Therma lease on April 20, 2022? The parking structure is there to serve all residents. It is there to serve the tenants and it is there to serve all residents. Again, the Ontario line will connect. That will mean that there will be a subway connection to Ontario okay. Place. There's a GO station. Thank you. But not everyone will be taking public transit to the site. Chair, I'm going to reclaim my time. Thank you. And MPP French. Um, okay, so I, I don't think that I'm going to get an answer from that, um, from this minister on that. Infrastructure Ontario has refused to disclose its 95-year lease with Therma, citing third-party confidentiality. The third-party confidentiality exemption under Section 17 of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act applies only to information supplied by the third party in confidence, but the Information and Privacy Commissioner has written, quote, a contract between an institution and a third party does not normally qualify as having been supplied because its terms are mutually generated, end quote. So is the ministry claiming that the terms of the lease were supplied by Therma? Uh, I guess what I'm really asking is why is Infrastructure Ontario ignoring this explicit guidance from the Information and Privacy Commissioner? We're very proud of the tenants that were selected to be at Ontario Place. Not only will Ontarians have activities for families to do, we're also going to see a $500 million investment on the site, and we're also going to see annual 
uh, dollars for annual maintenance in order to upkeep the site so that families can continue to enjoy it. Thank this you. Is a Chair, shift. I'm reclaiming my time. The question was specific. Is the ministry claiming that the terms of the lease, the 95-year lease with Therma, is the ministry claiming that the terms of the lease were supplied by Therma? I, I think if the intimation is that Therma gave us that term and it was not negotiated extensively, with them, that that is not correct, MPP. It was the subject of much ongoing negotiation in view of the capital investment being made by Therma, a private entity, in its facility at Ontario Place. Thank you. In that case, uh, as the Information and Privacy Commissioner has written, quote, a contract between an institution and a third party does not normally qualify as having been supplied because its terms are mutually generated, end quote. So I accept what you have told me, that if there was negotiation uh, and a back and forth, then it would indeed be a contract. So in that case, why is Infrastructure Ontario ignoring the explicit guidance from the Information and Privacy Commissioner? Um, and can we see a, a copy of the, the contract, of the lease? One minute remaining. Thank you very much. Again, we are very proud of the tenants that we selected at no. Ontario Place. I'm talking about third-party confidentiality, which has been used as the shield, and Infrastructure Ontario, I'd, I'd be curious to know if this is indeed a contract, then how can you claim party conf like third-party confidentiality? It was signed following an opaque and irregular procurement process that the government and paperwork has said, as I mentioned earlier, is not competitive. Uh, was not bound by conflict of interest requirements. The, the winning bidder was given a publicly funded parking garage that was refused to other bidders. There was a contract and, between a winning bidder and the bid and evaluation team. Ten seconds remaining. So there was no fairness, Commissioner. And, and, like, how and, is secrecy here in the at, best interest at, of Ontario? At this time, I have to call it the, that, that session. 